Hi, hope you're doing well today. I just want to talk to you about a particular scenario here, which uh, Chungman, our guest speaker, touched on in a, a slightly different context on Sunday. At the moment in Hounslow Evangelical Church, we're, we're back in Matthew's Gospel, and we're looking at the last six chapters that we haven't covered yet, and we'll be doing them till the end of June. And Chungman gave a really good talk, which uh, was challenging uh, thought-provoking and eye-opening and uh, you can find that also on this pay church page on Facebook and on our YouTube channel as well as so, I'm so, sorry it's in two parts but you can get get those two parts together and then hear his whole talk if you missed it on Sunday. Chungman mentioned a father who asked his two sons to help him to serve him in his work and he talked about the attitude those two sons might have to that service and the attitude they might even have to how the father treats the other one. And I wanna talk about two sons today, but in a slightly different context. And it was one, it was a, a, a parable, a story that Jesus gave in Matthew 21, verses 28 to 32. Jesus asked this, what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, no, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Which of the two obeyed his father? They replied, the first. Then Jesus explained his meaning. I tell you the truth. And note he was talking to the chief priests and leaders of the Jewish people here, the religious leaders. I tell you the truth, corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you do. For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live, but you didn't believe him, while tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. Now there's an application to this parable about our attitude to the kingdom of God and our response to God in general. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when I actually cover this passage uh, in the Sunday talks next month. But I want to think today about our basic attitude to when someone asks us a question, to when someone asks us to help them with something, or if they ask us if we're available for I don't, a coffee somewhere, or for a, a, a lunch um, engagement, or, or to go out somewhere, or to attend a particular event. How is, what is our approach to it? Because we can easily fall into the trap of these two sons, and particularly the younger one who said yes at first with no, no intention of actually doing what his father wanted him to do. And sometimes we can feel under pressure when someone asks us something, can't we? Uh, we get a very overbearing, assertive person, particularly a leader of some sort, and they put a lot of pressure on us. They're very persuasive, and we don't really want to upset them or cause a big argument. So we might just acquiesce with their wishes, just for an easy life. Maybe to save face, or that they might save face, and there's no difficulty or awkwardness. So the person says, can you commit to this? Oh yes, I surely will, just to get out them out of our hair as it were and you go away and you think actually I've got no intention of doing that at all I don't know why I even signed up to help them or to whether it's just to attend a particular event with them or whatever and so that person ends up not doing what they've said their yes has not really been a yes it's been a false statement and of course, because you don't want to upset that person or have a confrontation, you tend to not even tell them you're not going to do what they've asked you to do. And then I guess in the hope that maybe they'll have forgotten by the time you see them next. But of course, what you're doing is letting them down far more badly than if you'd said no in the first place and stuck to your guns. It's very easy to do, as I say, especially if that person is very overbearing. The other sort of reaction, possibly slightly less common, but it does happen as well, is where a person is like the older son and they just say, no, I'm not doing it, I'm not interested. And then they later on have a change of heart. Or maybe they even repent of their willfulness, their stubbornness, and they decide to do what has been asked of them after all. This in itself can at times be unhelpful, especially if there's no communication. 
For example, if you're trying to get numbers for a particular trip or event, and then the person who said no just turns up on a whim because they've had no better offers and there's nothing better to do, so they feel like turning up, it might actually cause a problem. You may be, as it were, um, oversubscribed. It's, it's a little bit the same with helping out an event. You can end up, as it were, with too many cooks spoil the broth sort of uh, scenario and people feel that they're not really needed. So communication is key. You know, if we do say no to someone, it's always good if we change our minds, actually tell them in advance that actually we're able to help or attend something after all. Likewise, if we find that we genuinely can't make a commitment that we've made, uh, earlier, we, we need to be honest enough and I think courageous enough to go and be up front to that person and say, sorry, I really can't make it up for something, you know, it's something like whether it's illness or some other legitimate reason for not being able to make it. And then at least that person can make steps to altering things. So what is your attitude to this? Is your word your bond? Is my word my bond? So it's easy to say yes just because for a quiet life. It's easy to just say no, just because we don't want anyone hassling us as well. I think sometimes the initial reaction, uh, why, why initial wise reaction, should I say, is to say no. If someone wants a yes or no, rather than a maybe, it may be best to say no, unless we can be certain that we can back up our yes. But that should not be an excuse to do nothing and commit to nothing either. We need to be serious about how we respond to people. We need to have, I think, respect in terms of how it is for them as well. It's not just about my needs and my wants. It's about how are my actions and my words affecting others as well. And are we living lives of integrity? Is what we say also the same as what we do? That's a challenge I think each of us needs to face, to think about. Uh, in terms of respect, in terms of our, our example as Christians. But may your yes be yes and your no be no. And may we live by that principle, not for an easy life, but because it's the right thing to do under God. It's the right way to love God and also love our neighbour. May you have a blessed day.